Don't you love calling guys like you need something done? I, yeah. You yeah, just yeah. call a guy and he shows up. Yep. Isn't that awesome? Just like this 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 world we live in that a guy is like on demand and he'll come whenever you want. I, he I just comes. It, it is really nice. <laughs> he just comes all over. And I think the best kind of guy to come is the one that just they don't really say anything. That it's just they they communicate like Kratos. Like they just come yeah, in with, with a bunch like of grunts. grunts. Yeah. <laughs> they come in they're like <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. You're like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, oh exactly. I can't I can't hang my my acoustic foam panel. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta help me. Please step guy, help me with my help me hang up painting. Yeah. And then he fucks you in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, because I was a film major. And uh, we get down there, and and our handler gets down, like, meets us and starts speaking to us in Spanish. And I was like, oh, where's our translator? And they kind of look around, they're like, it's you. You're fluent in Spanish. And I was like, (laughs) wait, you said that out loud. I put it on an application. No, no. You said when you got there, after oh, lying on your application, I, I you get there and like, my, where's my I translator? I sent it to my one friend who was like essentially the, the cameraman for the project. Oh I was like, God. he's talking to us in Spanish. Is, is he going to talk to us more in English? And they're like, no, 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 no. Like, he's going to talk. He's talking to you. Like, you're the translator. And I was like, oh, shit. So I had to figure out my Spanish Holy shit. fast. Dude, um, did it work out? Oh. I mean, like, how how hard was that? Because he knew some English. A lot of Cubans knew some English. I think from watching a lot of baseball, uh, like (laughs) that's where I started (laughs) with a lot of them was like baseball stuff. But I I knew enough to get us through. I think some people kind of they were like, I don't know if (laughs) we'll. Fuck, he's talking because they're like long sentences, and I would come back and I'm like, "Mm -hmm." okay, he said dinner. Is sometime later, and <laughs> I think he mentioned. And I think he that mentioned something about a cow. We a, we're just gonna see. It's a surprise. <laughs> it's a surprise. We'll, 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 we'll do. It. We'll fix it in post. Yeah, but that was a lot of fun, man. That was that was one of my favorite. Cuba is fucking incredible, dude. Dude, it's is, it's. Do they have nuts. those? Is that whole thing with the cars from the 50s, is that like yeah. a legit thing? Oh, dude. I, I, one of the th- things that blew my mind is someone went by in like a pristine, like 1950s Oldsmobile. Ugh. And I, I'll never forget, he's driving with one hand. And in the other hand, he had a bottle of water, like a liter of water, with a piece of tubing that he had going directly to the radiator. Because they're uh, obviously like the coolant was cracked or something, so he was like, po- like d- line dripping water dr- to the radiator to keep it from overheating while he was driving. And I was like, "That's nuts! They are so good at keeping these cars running. It would it would blow your mind." I mean, that is crazy. I mean, I feel like yeah. you'd be really hard pressed to find like a pristine version of any of the cars that they have yep. there in yep. the U S which is yeah. it's they, wild. They keep them running. Like they keep them running long after death. There's also, no reason that most of these cars should be running. Do they not get new ones? That was like kind of what our documentary focused on is because they were, they were kind of um, bullied by the United States in a way mm-hmm. and that, that they could, there was no trade, right? They weren't really, there was a lot a, of embargoes. all these embargoes. Yeah. And so they've become these like fiercely self-reliant people. And so like the, the documentary was on their sustainable farming, which is, it's crazy because this small Island Cuba, which, you know, uh, a lot of people look at and be like, Oh, they're, you know, around the poverty line. What would they know about advanced sustainable farming? Their sustainable farming practices are like light years beyond the United States where they sustain like full parts of the city with these with these organic farms that are in like the middle of a city. So you're driving through a city and then there's just like this central park of like sustainable farming and they're Damn. incredible at it. And they That's feed crazy. everybody. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tucker, yeah. you'd probably get a kick out of that you with your environmental science major. Yeah, that sounds awesome. If you, yeah. I was, it's funny you mentioned Cuba. I was on Google Maps the other day. And if you go to the street view of Cuba, I was looking at all the like antique or the vintage vehicles and stuff. It's a, uh, it's stunning. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a real, I, I think it's fully open now. I haven't been keeping track. I'm a, I'm a bad human being. I've totally tuned out from politics and stuff. I didn't even know there was a fucking space launch last night. Um, but it, it's definitely worth going. The food, the dancing, the cigars. Go see a baseball game. It's incredible. Mm. It's crazy, wow. man. Yeah. I would love to travel a little more, but I don't know if Cuba was the first place I had in mind. Uh, it, it should be high on your list. It's really it's wild, man. It's Fuck. it's crazy beautiful. The people are shockingly like just awesome. So when I went down, uh, I, I kind of did some research, and people were like, "Dude, 
bring a backpack full of baseballs and and, and, <laughs> and MLB stuff, and you will be the most popular guy in town. And at one point, uh, I filmed this thing where I went to the town square, and there were dudes just playing baseball in the town square. And I went up, and I was like, hey, guys. And I pulled a Yankees hat out and a baseball, and I was like, Does anybody? and people were like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Dios mio! Green! That's fucking awesome. Like, it, it was, yeah, they were fucking juiced. So they let me just film them play baseball and hang out with them, and they were awesome, man. They showed Damn. me around, like, legitimately awesome human beings. Dude, that That's is fucking cool. That is so yeah. cool. It's always so fun to have, like, it's such a rare, specific experience to go to another country and yeah. then have a sort of experience with the people who live there that like sort of also requires you to cross the language barrier a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I, have I have, I mean, I know I've talked about my trip to China, but have I talked about that sister school I went to on the podcast ever? You've talked about the basketball story from China. Oh, okay. Did I talk not, about the arm wrestling story? No, I don't think I've heard oh, the arm wrestling story. I'm ready for this. So ready for here we this, fucking baby. go, baby. So for people, people already know that I went to China in like 2015 or something for a, a trip that, Tucker and I's high school up just decided to have it wasn't even like crazy connected, by the way it wasn't connected completely to any nuts. Chinese <laughs> class or anything like that like I went and didn't know a lick of the language like I know like boo yao and like what does boo yao mean it just means I don't want when the, you're in when you're in t <laughs> like when you go to fucking Beijing and they're trying to sell you a little <laughs> like little a fast leave me alone boo yao. yeah <laughs> like a little red booklet that has like yeah. Mao Zedong's like fucking manifesto on it and they're trying and to that's sell what that they teach and that's probably what they teach the Chinese people when they go to a place like New York City and people are mm -hmm. like hey man <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, have you no. heard of Joseph A Smith. <laughs> like when when you're walking by the fucking Empire State Building, they're trying to sell you a helicopter tour. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we went to this. We went to Xi'an, and there was this sister school that we went to that um, we were partnered up with people. It was it was like this private school. It was called <laughs> Xi'an Number One High School, is its English <laughs> translation, which I think is hilarious. I love that. Um, cool. And we. It, it was just one of those things where, like, the kid, the kids there knew, like, limited English, but they knew English way better right. than I knew any fucking Mandarin, which was, yeah. I mean, it made me feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, but at one point, I don't know how this came about, but I got involved in a China versus America political <laughs> scheme. <laughs> political and, scheme? In, the, in, in China? The, in what the sense. That? With limited, it, with limited Mandarin, too. in the sense that I somehow got involved in like a bunch of kids from from the U.S. on my side and a bunch of kids from Xi'an Number One High School, and we, I was arm wrestling a dude somehow. I don't know how this came about. Oh but yeah, we're arm that, that was this the political had, debate. This had global political implications. It did. <laughs> it, did. it was like, is is future famous YouTuber Ted Nimison gonna beat random kid from Xi'an Number One High School? Who knows? Time? Oh, I was um, like sixteen or something like that. So Barack Obama was monitoring the situation. Yeah, no, they had a fucking. They had Blackhawks around the <laughs> around the school. They had one of those. What Tucker? What's that? A uh, stealth. What's that stealth thing that's that flies overhead that you a see? Stealth bomber. Yeah, a B two. Yeah, they had a fucking B two flying <laughs> overhead in this in the fucking stratosphere, and I. It was crazy because it was like the first time around. I was like, oh, this kid isn't gonna be. He's not gonna be good at arm wrestling. This is right. obviously a purely American ordeal. Like, there's no way that he would know about how this works. Wrong. He like pretty much beat me the first time, but then and everyone's like screaming and stuff, and I'm like, I can't, I can't do that. I have to, I have, you to, have come, to fight for your country. My I have to fight for my country. Yeah. Obama <laughs> would have my head. I'd be going straight to Guantan Guantanamo <laughs> if I let. And I proudly stand up. <laughs> some, you heard some eagles yeah. softly, softly going in the background. Yeah. So like an anime character, I was like, no, it's not over. And I get up and. I go and I like put my whole fucking being like it must have been like a fucking joke at at one point, but then I come back and I'm like I, and then I win and then it's like crazy on our side and then it's like sort of like oh he won one we won one and then it's like a oh, you know a, wow. all right we've 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 settled <laughs> the, the score scene, the scene from fucking predator yeah yeah 
Dylan, <laughs> exactly. you son of a bitch. Yeah. There was like a third <laughs> match? There wasn't no, a rubber there wasn't match? A th- there wasn't a third match. Wow. But I if mean, you've never heard the story, wow. I can the basketball story, I can summarize it really quick, Will. It was like we were brought to a we were brought to their like gym, um, their yeah. PA center or whatever, and all the kids were there and we were all just we were gonna be doing something there. I think we were just supposed to like, you know, do sports or whatever in the gym. And me and a couple of the guys who were also on this trip were like, oh, there's they've got basketball hoops. We'll, we'll just shoot some basketball. So we ask around and we're like, okay. Hey, there are basketball hoops here and we're just kind of standing around can we get some basketballs and they're like oh yeah yeah no we'll we'll play basketball and so we're like okay cool and we're waiting for a little bit and then all of a sudden it's like they start to like make a crowd around the basketball court and we're like what is going on and you know we played basketball but it was they brought in their basketball team oh (laughs) and it's like me and like Four other dudes that are just brought, like brought random ringers. kids from from fucking our high school, our Massachusetts high school that were not on the basketball team. Right. And <laughs> there's this one dude who's like six five and he's like <laughs> sixteen years old. And we're like, what? And we play a whole fuck and I'm in khakis. I'm in khakis <laughs> and like a fucking long sleeve. And we're playing a whole <laughs> game of fucking basketball with these guys. I'm sweating. I'm like fucking and these guys are like they've got the fucking arm warmer on and stuff yeah the shooting (laughs) sleeve they look like creative players from nba 2k (laughs) they they um and the that story basically ends with at one point i rejected that dude who was like six five and i thought he was trying to go up for it and then later on i hear that apparently that dude was going into uh chinese professional basketball so that's my claim to fame in the uh, you said boo yao (laughs) <laughs> I said, boo. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Did you win but, the game, Ted? No, no, we didn't. They, at one point, they had to bring, they had to give us that, one sorry. of their players. That's at hilarious. one point, they, they, they put one of their players on our team, Ted, and we, all of a sudden, we got one I of their. Just, I would just say, be thankful you didn't ask to use their diving pool. Because from what I understand, they're the best divers in the world, and they would have fucking destroyed you. Oh. China's the best at a lot of shit. I'm yeah. not going to lie. At least basketball, you, you had a fighting chance. <laughs> they love yeah. basketball, though. Yeah. They got they got they their whole NBA with the thing NBA. There. Yeah, man. That's yeah. why it's such a big deal when when someone from the NBA says that Taiwan is real, and then... <laughs> and then <laughs> And uh, and then China then they're like, like LeBron, it. you gotta you gotta say something about this, and he's like, just not, yeah. <laughs> just not not smart. And then he goes, Nike wouldn't out. like it. What? <laughs> Bing chilling. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good yeah. story, Ted. I love that. Yeah, no, it I was wish, one of the craziest dude, things to happen to me. I wish, for sure. I wish I had more fucking stories about just being in pl- in cool places. See, I've had zero schlatt. zero foreign enrichment in my entire life, and I think it's. Abundantly obvious based on the type of person I've become. Yep. You're, a, you're at a crossroads. You can either I, travel and enrich yourself or you become a grunt guy. Dude, <laughs> well, what if true. I could be both? What if that's I could be both? True. No, you can't you, be both. No, you can't. can't Why be would both? you want to be a grunt no guy? No one though. is is like making their ways down the channels of Venice, you uh, know, and, and the guy's like, oh, which, uh, grazie. You want to get the linguine <laughs> later? Yeah. You know what I mean? No, you're touched by the magic. <sighs> I went to Ireland once. I was I was six years old. The only <laughs> thing I remember from that fucking god awful country is the plants that have spikes on them. They're called nettles. It's the only only bit of knowledge I retained from that fucking shithole. I was like, yeah, I, I get why you guys forgot how to make potatoes. It's, it's just it's absolutely miserable there. Schlatt just unearthed trauma. I just have this vision of six year old Schlatt chocked full of nettles like a fucking porcupine. <laughs> Frisbee. We we brought a frisbee on the trip somehow. We were throwing it with our fucking Irish ancestors, and I run into a bush full of nettles, and I'm like, ah! and they're like, oh no, don't don't go into that. A little late to tell me. I go inside. I'm fucking bleeding. Like my arms, my oh, legs are God. fucking shredded. Oh, and they're like, God. yeah. Oh, sorry, we forgot to tell you about the fucking nettles. That yeah, are and then, all they, and then they this say, country. it's all right. Here's a beer. Yeah, and, and I say, Ireland. booyah. <laughs> I said booyah. <laughs> I went to Australia, but that's not very different. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the least enriched. That's like uh, yeah. 
<laughs> that's the uh, least rotation Australia of the crop circle like there in terms of enrichment. United States. You know what I mean? It's like Mad Max <laughs> United States a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it, it did is. feel a little a little more dangerous. Yeah. You know? A lot more poisonous spiders. Schlott, did you see the movie Nope? Nope. <laughs> I don't know if you're... That's Nope question mark or... No. Uh, you'd the last the movie I watched was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. That's a great and movie. And it was the best movie I've seen all yes. year. And I decided I would stop watching movies this year. I loved that movie. You should see Nope. That There's a lot of chimpanzee nope attacks good. in it. There's... There is a lot. It's a very prevalent theme. It's quite a bit. It's it's like you you start watching that movie and like from the get go you're like man chimpanzee attack. Yeah, you'd Maybe like I it. it. I think you'd I you know it's one of those things where I think that most people I'd be like expect to be shocked, but then yeah. for that scene for Schlatt, I just think that he'd be guffawing the whole what time. What do you mean that scene? Is there a chimpanzee attack scene? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there is big time specifically. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like ten big minutes time. long. What the fuck? Yeah. Why did no one tell me? <laughs> I, that's what I'm telling you now. I gotta go see this fucking film. It was that, people... all, right, all right. I got a list. I got a short list. I got Nope now, and I got yeah. All Quiet on the Western Front. I want to see that mm, shit too. I like somebody that, walks yeah, out of the great. movie theater after seeing Nope, Nope, and they're running to the fucking phone booth to like <laughs> trying to they're get you on the line. Yo, slut! <laughs> fucking chimpanzee attack scene. Yeah. <laughs> God. Um, Dude, I wish we telegraphed more. That is an opinion that you hold only. We telegraph. I mean, okay, you want to. You want to like it. What is? What is different? What is so great about telegraphing that you couldn't get in? Like just sending like an old fashioned letter. It just feels so urgent. Something about Morse code just feels so <laughs> fucking urgent. That, that's true because you don't know what is you don't know what's being said. Yeah. You have to decipher that it. Is and if true. it is Do you urgent, think anybody sexted via telegraph? Oh, definitely. that's a question no one's ever. Do you think some dude? Well, was just sexting sitting there? is almost inherently urgent based on your your hormones, your horniness. It's right. a hormonal but urgency. Now just imagine. Some guy sitting there. Can you hear this? I assume. Oh, well, I'm getting. I'm getting hints of it, but it sounds like you're doing the the Go XLR. Yes, beep I'm doing thing. the Go XLR beep. And some guy's sitting there, and he's like, "Oh, you want me to do what? <laughs> wait, wait, what she? What she saying? Scribble song. Ooh, oh, nasty. Fuck. <laughs> some guy's in the room next door. He's like piecing it together. He's like, "That's just awful." <laughs> they're sending SOS. Mean. I think they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, Thomas Edison did this, according to what? Reddit. Yeah, Thomas Edison taught his, sec his second wife Morse code so they could communicate in secret. <laughs> That's incredible. Fuck, Dude, what a fucking man. homie. So Thomas Edison. Treacherous Thomas getting his, getting his rocks <laughs> off via the Thomas. telegram. Damn. Wow. There is something urgent about, well, here's the thing. There is an equation that's required for the urgency of the telegram because mm. you can't be the one to receive to know that you got the telegram you need a person to come into the room and say so you've got a telegram <laughs> that's, that's true that's like an important aspect of receiving a telegram is you need to hire someone to to interpret the beeps and yeah. write it into smut write it into smut and then come in and say so you've got a telegram you have a and fucking liaison going back and forth yeah i want to come in you and he's just like ah oh, god yeah. sir yeah I, I i used to work for the war effort what the fuck is this <laughs> you've got like one of the navajo code talkers doing it encrypted for you so that nobody can figure out what you're the saying wind talkers <laughs> The, the, the <laughs> yeah, dude, encrypted fucking sex telegrams. Oh man, oh shit, that's good. That's good memes right there. That's a that, that's yeah. really funny. I don't know if I'm too nostalgic for the telegram. It's I mean, it's I don't think any of us are time. old enough to be. <laughs> it's before my time, but um, yeah, will. But you're nostalgic about telegrams, given yeah. how old you are. Yeah, I <laughs> I remember the telegram like it was yesterday. Yeah. You know what I miss? Huh. I miss the flip phone T9 predictive text. That's oh, yeah. what I miss. I grew up on that shit. Everyone else had, was starting to get like iPhones and shit. My parents were like, nah, you st you're sticking with that you Motorola could Razor. Fly. Are you using an, uh, an iPhone? I have an iPhone now, yeah. They have a version of it. <clears throat> they do? 
you just leave your finger on the phone and start tracing the letters and it'll oh out. yeah, yeah. I, I do that I never but I, understood. i'm talking about like the the you get the keypad, the, the nine boy. numbers. You got to hit boy. one three times yeah. to get to see. Yeah. yeah. I feel like in order to use that swipe thing, though, you have to have like a brain that thinks in the fourth dimension. Like I have never, I've tried it before and I do not know yeah. how it fucking works. No. I used I to, can, dude, the predictive text, though, he's right. I think the swipe thing you can teach your brain because I, when I taught tennis, I taught with a girl who would text in her pocket. Huh? Using, yeah, using predictive text, and it was crazy. She would like. So you weren't message. even mad. You were impressed. No, she was my coworker. Oh, I thought this was like a student that was no, she like would take her phone out. <laughs> she would get the get the message quickly, and then she would put her phone in her pocket and do this. That is fucking crazy. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, how do you even? How do you, a wizard. I mean, that is people were up. good at. Good at texting when it back at the keypad era was I almost exclusively did... used the swipe feature. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I'm I'm very good at it. Mm. But... Did your question? Oh, did ahead. your dyslexia hamper your texting ability? And this is from a pure curiosity, not being like, haha, oh, you're yeah. dyslexic. I, I've I've sent and posted some things that are just wrong. They're mm. just nonsense. <laughs> they're just, they're just <laughs> wrong. There's What's so the... many tweets. What's the and worst then your one? whole audience is like, ha ha. <laughs> we'll oh. just post it gobbledygook again. Dude, Fuck. but you could you could ruin them. You could ruin them. You How? could you could tear them down. You could say that's ableist. I'm not I'm not stooping to that. <laughs> oh, you think it's a stoop? Ted, I'm not missing a leg. I can't read. <laughs> The people that are allowed to use ableism, I'm not one of them. Okay. Oh my Ted, I'm not missing a leg. I can't read. Okay. That fair. Fair yeah. point. I fair listen, point. I think that some people should be able to use the ableism ban badge. I'm just not one of them. Let me clarify mm -hmm. by saying that, right? Which is why my like zombie apocalypse plan valor. is so anti ableist because yeah. of the ramps. Listen, I I've experienced things like this, okay? Where people mm. steal some valor. You want to know what valor is getting stolen all over the place that I what? can't stand? Freckles, okay? You've got all freckles. These, I got freckles. I've seen and you with your shirt off. like five years ago, it became vogue to have freckles. And all these fucking wannabes started getting freckles tattooed on them. Huh? Tattooed? You guys don't know this? No. What the oh, fuck? Dude, I'm learning now. I'm this learning became now. a huge thing. A bunch of mostly women. I don't mean to I don't mean to be gender well now live now on the Chuckle Sandwich Podcast saying tattoo freckles are a specifically woman problem. It's like I think it's like tattoo and henna freckles. A lot of people started doing them. Wow. Are we finding any information on this? Am I totally Yeah, this seems to be a pretty big thing. And they last so, they're semi permanent, so they're not as permanent as a real tattoo. This is saying six months to ten years. But yes. so I mean, it might as I well be. Got, I got my ass kicked growing up for having freckles. Right? You got like, your ass kicked. Someone said, Look yes. at you with your weird dots on your face. So let me beat yes. the shit out of you. Oh, for sure. Really? I, my what were their names? used to hold me down and play your connect the dots. Wait, who? Uh -huh. As though my freckles would draw something in the constellation of the swirling mel like melanin on my skin, but it was nothing. It was just them oh. butchering me with a ballpoint. Wow, that must have been painful too. A ballpoint, not even a sharpie, it's, no, not even the not, not even the fucking honor no, to use it, a sharpie with a it ballpoint. Sucked. It wasn't it wasn't accurate enough. The a sharpie. ballpoint pen does not yeah. work on skin. So I'll tell you, I ended up in a situation. I ended up in a real Mexican standoff at one point because a girl I knew got tattooed freckles. Oh. And I approached her and I said, you know, I was trying to be magnanimous. I said, I like your new freckles. And she said, oh, yeah, they really come out when the sun's out. Oh. And I you. said, I said, jerk. And and it was one of those things like curb your enthusiasm where sometimes you can let things go and sometimes you just can't. 
And I looked Sometimes her dead in the eyes and I hand. said, are you fucking kidding me? And I did this. And I showed her that I am covered head to toe in freckles. And I went, come on, those aren't real freckles. And she said, no, of course they are. I've had them my whole life. I could have walked away. I could have accepted that she was insecure about getting ta freckle tattoos. No. You, I pulled you. up her fucking Instagram. Whoa. And I went back. In, with, with her standing there? Standing. And I go, where are the freckles? Here's you in a bathing suit. Lots of sun there. Where are they then? And she was Why like, to me. she's me. like, you just can't see them there. And I went, you fucking liar. <laughs> just say that you got them done. Erroneous. It's okay. It's okay. I don't mind. Just admit it. Wow. Would not admit it. Would that is it. wild. Yeah. I've heard people getting tattoos of like hairline so oh. that they look, you know, so that they can just be bald and pretend like they still have a little bit of stubble going on. Yeah. I've never yeah. heard of the fucking freckle thing. Oh, That's it's nuts. Big. It's Honestly, big. the freckle thing seems less intense than the fucking hairline one. I, you, are you talking about like the, the, like the straight up? It looks like a buzz cut, but it's just yeah. It looks up. like a buzz cut, but it's tattoo. just tattoo. It's just tattoo <laughs> all the way around. That is so, so, so. That's almost. There's so many levels worse than freckle tattoos. I feel like than I just like a I whole don't think head that of hair. Is. You're not. You're not like. I mean, you're, I, I guess, guess you're kind of. You're kind of tattoos. pretending. I don't mind the freckle tattoos, but you, but 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 when you f you just hated this person. I didn't hate this person. I just hated that this person you that I knew. Them that I knew wouldn't burn. admit it's dude. It's like if, if I showed up tomorrow and I clearly had a Brazilian butt lift, right? My ass is just gigantic. <laughs> and you're like, well, what happened? And I'm like squatting. And you're like, I saw yeah. you a week ago. Like, yeah. There's still bloody bandages on your ass. What dude, are you talking about? Your ass is going further than your hips. What yeah, are you and talking I'm like, great, about? I got a great new trainer. And you're like, what? What are you? What are they putting cantaloupe in yeah. your skin? What are and you? And then talking you're like, uh, then you're like, wait, look at this picture of your ass I took the other day. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Would you guys ever get a Brazilian butt lift? Maybe would, for content. Would me or Schlatt get a Brazilian? Yes. I think that would be mm -hmm. a great. I would, not but video. I imagine Tucker might. You seen that guy on Can TikTok you? who's got the big butt? Yes, yeah. but I think yes. that's fake. That is definitely an implant. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's an implant? No, I, like a like a he just kind of puts them in his pants, yeah. you know? I think he's made a video showing the actual thing and it was like Oh, a, yeah, the, the guy that yeah. runs everywhere? Yeah, yeah. The oh, guy that's that totally. Runs. He's always yeah, got like a security yeah. team with him in those videos. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's yeah. totally it's totally just a costume. But what if you did that? I have considered No. <laughs> You Don't. didn't let me finish. You I know, didn't let me finish what I was going to say, To Ted. start with that is such a strong open, you know, <laughs> when talking about a Brazilian butt lift or an implant in your ass. I'm not talking about start, a Brazilian butt lift. I know, I'm not but, talking just, about, but that's I'm what not we're talking, talking about. about. Implant so for in you my to ass. say, I have considered <laughs> is a it tough to open. to do with body modification. Okay. okay. I have considered yes. more than once that, uh, of... Filming, you know, a shit ton of videos in advance and then working on them over the course of maybe like six months. So there's a drip feed of videos from when I filmed them back at the oh, beginning of I the year. I think you've told me about this. I've definitely told you about this. And then the second I'm done filming all those videos, I start putting steroids in my ass, <laughs> like anabolic steroids. And then okay. for the next three, four months... I'm just living in the gym. Yeah. And I will I will blow up like a balloon. I will get in, insanely shredded. And then once the videos run out, I'm just back. The audience thinks nothing happened. But all of a sudden, I'm just huge. Yeah. Just like out of nowhere, I'm just absolutely yoked. I think that would be fucking hilarious. They're like, what the fuck happened in a week? That would be amazing. Because yeah. they're still You'd seeing the shit Peter from a year Griffin, ago. Griffin, though, when he went on steroids, though. Or Stewie, when he flew. No, it was Peter who went. On I think steroids. at one point everybody in the show was jacked. There was an episode where Stewie <laughs> was jacked. There was an episode where yeah. Brian was jacked. Yeah, that's true. That is true. 
Yeah, though I just specifically remember the one where Stewie got jacked and then he could fly with the skin flaps. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, all right. So I, 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 the big thing where I think about this idea where it kind of like, it's kind of like iffy, you know, is that steroids are harmful in mm -hmm. the long term. Yeah. But if I just do one round of them, you know, I just do one cycle and I get really big just for, just for a joke, you know, it would be yeah. such a good bit and no one's ever done it before. Tucker, it is, we're going to need some information on these steroids. Yeah, here. I got a guy I can, if you want to come after this, yeah, I have a guy I, who can help you. Tucker, My cock already steroids? doesn't work. No, it, I don't it already do steroids, can't get hard. So like, I don't see names, the problem. But... Well, what's the, what's the disadvantages of doing steroids? I know that there are plenty, but uh, I don't you know can, what you they can, are. You can schwack your testosterone up. It's very hard on your organs. So you can't really be drinking and, and doing stuff like that with it. I already well. put a beating on, on my body. I mean, it's been carrying 100 pounds extra weight for like a yeah. couple of years now. You're not a heavy guy. You're not a, a, a rotund person. I gained probably 70 pounds since COVID started. Yeah. But I think I also turned 21 around that time. And yeah. so I don't know if it was the COVID or I don't know if it was my incessant daily drinking. Yeah, right. That'll Might have been it. the latter. That'll Might have been it. the latter. Sitting yeah. around all day and drinking will definitely make you big. I've yeah. finally gotten back in shape, like mm. to where I was before COVID. I'm, I'm. Hitting I remember that seeing last your in, your Twitter post where you posted a photo of you looking hot, and yeah. you were like, you were like, it was you at thirty, and you were like, I'm looking to get back to this point. I remember seeing yep. that post, and yep. so you you feel like you you've done it. Uh, I'm I'm starting to get a little well, look at you. cranked Woo! again. Yeah, wow. I'm, I'm I'm entering the last phase where it's like cutting down again because um, you put the yeah. size on and then it's like you strip away the the gunk. So you, wow, mm. yeah. I had I had a follow up thing and then I <laughs> as I was forgot. as You're I was opening about the it just yeah, that left my mind. Yeah. yeah. Well, you. So I remember it. You you work out for two hours a day. I do. That's oh, that's shit. wild to me. Really, Tucker? You also work out for a similar amount. Yeah, usually like like an hour, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. God, it's just wild to me. Like I feel like I give myself so many excuses to just not put that in my schedule. That it just the two one or two hours just sounds like an insane amount of time to be working out for. Yeah, well, but it's not. You get hooked I mean, on like, it, and then you fit everything else in your schedule around it. Yeah, yeah. right. Me, Ted, you, and me. We've got two hours a day, probably. We do. We do. We always we do. do. We, we do. All, we, I, of, of any sort of person doing any sort of job in the entire world, we have the most opportunity to go to the gym than, than anyone. I have a huge advantage, though, in that I, I love working out. It's my favorite part of the day. It's really? like a meditative thing for me. I listen to mm. music. I watch what I want. It's like silent. You know what I mean? I... I enjoy that period of my day more than any other period of my day. So that's a huge advantage. But I think if if you're not one of those people who enjoy working out, I think you should just get a trainer. Like there's such an advantage in someone just telling you to be like, do that. And then you just mm, do, yeah. you know, do what they say. How did you get into working out initially? Uh, my, my dad thought I was a fat kid and he gave me a gym membership for Christmas when I was 11. And I started going. Oh. Damn. Damn. Are you still working out at a at a public gym? Uh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I, I, I like I like like real so it's interesting. I was a member at like the bougie gym in Los Angeles. Yeah. Equinox. And I fucking hated Ooh. it. I fucking hated it. It was just a different vibe. I, I needed to be back where the metal was. I needed to be back where there was like <laughs> palpable testosterone in the air yeah. and weights yeah. were slamming and a dude had his shirt off. You know what I mean? Like, smell <laughs> fear. So you yeah, said something I, interesting there. I, I fucked with that way more. Cause I, the other gym Equinox, it's gorgeous. It's really nice. But like you have like influencers like on their phone, like recording yeah. a set. Mm -hmm. And, and then like, they get pissed at you when yeah. you like walk by. They're like, yes. dude, that was yeah. for the, that was for the gram, man. Yep. Or, or like the other thing you get at really nice gyms is people doing these insane circuits where they're using like eight different pieces of equipment at the same time. And you're like, okay, dude, okay. come on, man. 
Um, yeah. And it was just always packed, and people were moving so slow, and no one's actually sweating. I like that fucking <laughs> dirty gym. You like you like to smell blood and salt. Yeah, they also have they also have better equipment. I feel like really nice gyms have a lot of really good cardio equipment, which is who, who the fuck needs that? Just run, just get on a treadmill and fucking run. Um, but like they don't have like the heavy hitting. I'm gonna develop my fucking lats. Weird like torture rack type. <laughs> you know what I mean like just these archaic <laughs> stretching racks and fucking you know what I mean that like, like I a medieval fuck, torture machine y- exactly <laughs> you need those and that's like what really gives you the bomb wow I pay $27 a month <clears throat> is that anytime fitness what is it that is, or is LA fitness it's LA fitness yeah that's what I was looking to go to next from from mm-hmm. what I have now because it's like it I don't because I don't because I'm fucking I'm like I was going to it and I was like it's nice but like I don't fucking need it it's also expensive and it's like Teddy I'll bring you in and then that way you and Schlack honestly can, can that is something I would like I need at the I same think time. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that I need is I need I need some some peeps to go with just you yeah. someone to, yeah. to show up with someone else I feel like is so important mm-hmm. um that it's like we're you know we're going uh, next who, week who are you, well, yeah, I gotta get you that little guest pass. Do thing. it. We're we're going every day. I'm out there. Yeah. You gotta order some. Um, someone gotta, to keep you honest, man. That's good. You gotta order some creatine exactly. too. Ooh. <laughs> some Ooh. no explode. Some of the Cold Stone Creamery protein powder. You will get so yoinked if you do that. Yoinked in a good way or a bad way? Yeah, big. Have you ever done pre workouts? I've tried a pre workout, like, but it's it's just like one of those ones that's like caffeine, and I'm like, yeah, this I, this is this doesn't boomer, even this doesn't even hit this hits barely as hard as my fucking ADHD medicine does in an eighth form. That's right. As a boomer, as a guy who remembers the telegraph, let me say, pre workouts used to be way better. Okay, that really? old shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's not the you, same if your hands aren't fucking. Yeah, you used to feel like there were dude, there was coke in them. Is what he's trying to say. There's co- <laughs> there was coke in the pre workout. You oh dude, so many of them got banned. So many of them got banned by the the Food and Drug Administration. Like they would they would release them and you could buy them before. Like there was one called Muscle Marinade at one point, oh, and it was like you took it, fuck. and it was it was like pulling the pin on a grenade. You had thirty minutes to be in a gym working out, or you were shitting your brain. <laughs> just sick, like, oh. You would fucking take that shit and you just, you, you know, dude. Explosive. Honestly, that's kind of how Tucker described his pre workout experience to me, though, when he was still in the Marines. Like, he'd be like, he'd be like, dude, I'm taking this pre workout, and if I'm not, if I in the next 20 minutes, if I'm not in the gym, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm feeling like I Die. need a punch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that and we used to, it was good stuff. What'd you take? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Back then, I don't know. I was just. Going with my buddies because I was just getting into hitting the gym and I would just take whatever they handed me. <laughs> oh shit! Do you ever do you ever take any rip fuel? I don't know. I know they had okay. I know rip that fuel. they have that in the Marines and it's basically rip fuel and muscle marinade. Yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah, baby. God, I gotta start working out, man. Oh, or I, you just gotta fuck. get into the business of naming them because it you seems like they'll take anything. The most as as a partially grunty guy. It really, uh, it re- it'll take you to the next level. I have a home gym. I, I'm, I'm get. Don't go to your home gym. Well, I'm at the point, man, where I would feel c- very, like, insanely conscious about who's around me in a gym because in Austin, everyone knows I'm there, mm. and a lot of the gyms, like, a lot of young kids, mm. and so unless I went to Anytime Fitness at like 3 a.m., which is something I used to do. Uh, I would be very nervous and like, fuck, who's watching me type type things. I went to a restaurant the other night. I got two steps in the door. I took two two photos with two of the workers. Like really? It, yeah, man. And so as much as I want to be out you and don't doing like that, stuff. Huh? No, no. I mean, I I like attention. But when it gets in the way of like something I'm, I'm actually trying to do, like yeah. Ted, when you were trying to walk through the convention center, uh, it gets a little... Right, like yeah, no, that was uh, that that kind of sucked a little bit. It's weird. It's it's like a it's a double. I mean, it is literally a double sided sword. It yeah. is the definition of a double sided sword. 
because it's like there that the 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 reason it's happening is as a result of your success and you know and i don't hate it i don't hate it but sometimes when you're really like when you're trying to when you're late for something or you're trying to make something that's when it it hits it hits different where you're like oh oh i have to keep moving but you're so nice and i don't want to fucking i don't know i feel like you de deal with it in a different way though Schlatt. i feel like you're like <clears throat> and then they're like uh, oh, I'm, I'm a grunt guy yeah that's what i do when i walk uh, are you Schlatt? <clears throat> <laughs> yeah exactly uh, take their phone tr tr just there give it really back. is a, a we, difference in how people approach you though you know what i mean there's some people that approach you and you're just like oh man you're so sweet and polite and then there are other people and you're like oh, that's, 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 yeah and those people will probably be at the gym recording <laughs> me <laughs> recording me doing like one plate on the bench press ah! you know <laughs> but you know will <laughs> yeah you are probably the most famous acting boy that I've met. You carry yourself in such a famous way. Like when mm. we're going on a flight okay. to Philly and I've got main cabin and I walk into this flight and Story I time. see Will Neff sitting his little <laughs> shrew ass down on a first class seat he's sitting there with his fucking big puffy jacket he's looking yeah. there he's looking up at me he's looking embarrassed <laughs> we had the option for point crow party to tell them what <laughs> so why were you on the flight them... let's let's back up here yeah i guess the context the context is so <laughs> will and i and several others <laughs> we can cut it out if you want but i think it's no, funny. That's great um the we were uh, Eric Point Crow. He is a yes. Twitch streamer. He had this massive event that was a real life IRL Mario Party. They were doing it in in, in Pennsylvania, and it was like this massive, massive set. It was like it was huge. It was life size, mm -hmm. um, and they were flying a bunch of people out to be the NPCs and also players. Will you were you were doing Luigi? And I was. I was the shopkeeper, and it was Woody Woods, which is, if you guys know Mario Party, it was, it was the one with the two, the happy tree and the angry tree. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so we we had the, they took care of everything. It was really, really cool. I mean, they got, they got hotels, they got meals, they got fucking, and so we had to fill this Google form, and they had the option of, like, what sort of um, class of flight do you prefer? And for me, I was like, maybe the comfort plus because i'm a bigger dude and i'd like that room and so i get some main cab and i get some comfort plus and i get to the airport and i'm chatting with will because we're on the same flight and then they call first class and will turns to me and he's like all right it's our turn now see you in there and i was like no, i'm uh i'm main cab and he's like he's like oh what oh am i an asshole am i an asshole i got first class the whole thing <laughs> yeah I did. On the form, when it said first class, I wrote, if at all possible, question mark. <laughs> that's, and that's so funny. I, I didn't know that no one else would request first class. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was a four-day trip to it Pennsylvania, was, it, was, it, was, it was. And when you described it to me and you were like, it's a four-day trip to Pennsylvania, I was like, well, if they're paying, I guess, I guess I kind of was kicking myself that I didn't ask for that. After I saw that you were doing that, <laughs> okay. yeah, to be that's honest. four days of the of your time that they're asking for, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna. I, I, I feel horrible saying this, but when I fly on a flight, if I don't fly in the comfort plus or the first class, I'm fried after I get off the plane. Fried. Yeah, I mean, flights are fucking tiring, man. Yeah, they are tiring, dude. Especially like that middle seat. Mm. Yeah. Especially when people don't know the etiquette. Have we talked about the fucking etiquette? Have you ever talked about the oh, etiquette? Oh, I mean, your audience I, should. We know. haven't talked about it, but I will talk about the etiquette because because when we got off the flight, like we had like a brief mention of it. Yes, but go if for it. If you are in the middle seat, mm -hmm. you get both armrests. True. Everybody 100 true knows this, this and is, sometimes uh, it's crystal. There are ground wars where people on the window. We'll start posturing for your armrest. Mm -hmm. I just broke my Herman Miller when I did that. I yanked too violently. 
That marks a surprising ratio of podcast episodes to chairs broken on the Chuckle Sandwich. L You're two or three episodes ago, Will, I broke my steel case by kicking it for a bit. I can't believe I've done this. Well, we're that not gonna the, we're not gonna pay for it. <laughs> we just want to get that out of the way. We're not I paying first for it. First class ticket. <laughs> yeah. So so you're right, Will. There is a there is a rule. If you're in the middle seat, you get both because you are in the shittiest seat. And yeah. and for and it's it's one of those things though. You gotta correct me on this. I'm trying to remember what is the best part of that of that armrest. Is it better to have your arms in the back of it or in the front? Front. In the front. You think so? Because then you kind of have to lean forward. I feel like it might be the back. There's no share in it. Oh, yeah, I know. I know that. I know that. But I'm I'm thinking in terms of like when you were trying to establish control as the middle seater, because it is a silent war. It is it is a there war. There should be that no is, war. It is, but but when you there are should trying, be an understanding when you are trying to get your do your what what you what belongs to you, yeah. you kind of have to do like the, the, yeah. Okay. You do a little pivot in on yeah. the inner part and then start rotating like a clock hand. So you eventually have the whole armrest. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's wrong? What, what, what's wrong with that? You well, seem I, confused. I mean, if you it comes to war, I think you just, are you that insane? You're an insane man. If I you really in the you're going to spend hours with that person. You're going to start off with Puh! yes. Rah! Really? You gotta, shock and awe. I'm not tangoing with your fucking elbow. I'm not. He already going. gets one. He already gets one. He already gets one. Think of it. Think of it like this. This he is one in a view. This is a 50 transaction for for both people to the yeah. side. They get one. The other person gets one. Yeah, yes. the you person in the window arm. seat gets a view, and the person in the aisle seat, they're the person that can be that guy that gets to stand up first. Yes. Which, yeah. honestly, when a flight ends, is one of, is huge. It's, it's honestly, it's it's turning me towards... I fuck with I've, the aisle seat. I've been on a flight before, when I was a younger man, with two rotund people, where my flight was like this. And my spine was like chalk. At the end of the flight, without a sit, without with nary an armrest, the full weight of your of your person is just bearing down on your spinal column, and it's just vaporizing your discs. Wow, you're turning to powder. You're becoming. You're, you are. You're turning becoming to muscle dust. marinade. Yeah, you're becoming just pure, the only thing that was balancing your spine was the pure marrow. Yeah. Left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but. I mean, I suppose we should, we've been going for a little bit now, but I want to quickly chat about uh, that trip because I feel like that was a, a funny thing, but I feel like oh, we've been going for, you You probably got to go though, don't you, Will? D my Discord just crashed and I thought it was something you guys did as a bit. What? I've never experienced that. <laughs> my Discord just fully crashed and I... 100% thought it was a bit you guys do. Are you still recording? Yes. Not where my, we, my uh, where we remove the guest from I the wish, <laughs> I just... wish you could have seen it on my end, but Ted, it literally went, we've been recording for a while now, and I think <laughs> we should. And it went, <laughs> Yeah, and I was I like, mean, is this one of their new fucking bacon or gaming <laughs> things? Yeah. Well, that would have been so rude. I would never do that to you. Well, you know I we, love you. I do have a question for you, Will, though. What's sure. the shape of Italy? It's a boot. No, it is a thing that you're doing? No, I I don't agree with this. I I'm, don't not gonna kick him. I'm not going <laughs> to yes. kick him. I'm not going to kick him. I'm not going to kick him. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> I've gotten that pulled on me many times in Xbox Live, though. The second you say boot, you're just you're fucking gone. kicked. That's the worst. That's the worst. Getting kicked from Xbox Live parties is like... Oh. That's, yeah. that you really that's pain right there man. i want to yeah. talk about the philly thing before we go, before we go there because we we've been recording for about an hour now yeah but that was a fun trip it was a great trip it was incredible good, people good fucking trip yeah. and will you yeah. were incredibly funny oh on stop. that 
stream. I don't. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, obviously the Mario Party thing, but Will, for context, decided to do a Luigi Italian accent the whole time. Yes, for um, the entirety of the four and a half hour. Would you give true. an example of what that sounded like? Yeah, what? I'm a Luigi. I'm a gonna win. <laughs> so he did that the whole time, and he started off really positively. But then for each of the characters that we were playing, it was like this whole long improv thing. They started, in, we all started independently introducing lore into yeah. this world. <laughs> like for me, I forget what my lore was. It was something stupid like where where I'm, I've got like, I'm cousins with, with like the guy who was playing Toad, which is slime. He's on the yard. His name yep. was, Ch he went by Chode with the, with the, <laughs> With, there was Chodette, and they were like divorced, Chod and Chodette. And yeah. like, I had like this big issue with Mario where I kept like bullying him the whole time. Yes. I was homies with Boo, like, and I was helping him through his trauma. And Boo, the ghost, was traumatized by yeah. Will, yes. who through his, through Luigi, through his Luigi's Mansions ordeal, had killed his whole family. That's right. Um, and in the beginning of the stream, I told everybody, I was like, I want one of my character things to be whenever I mention the ghost game, because we can't mention it because of Nintendo, just right. all grown, just all be so over <laughs> my fucking ghost game. And I'm going to be so proud of it. So every time we had a break, I be, I was like, everybody love my ghost game. They can't wait for the next ghost game. And everybody was like, was like shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up. up about the ghost. <laughs> You're just jealous of my ghosts. And, uh. So now, uh, King Boo and I had a lot of interesting that was interactions Jarvis Johnson. that that ended in like a Scarface style monologue where I'm dying, where I talked about yeah. how I how his family died like pigs and they begged for their lives, and I can put you them do in can my you vacuum. Just, oh yeah, can, can you, you just do, do the? It? Can you just do it? It was so funny. Your family died badly. They begged for their lives like pigs. And I pulled them into my vacuum cleaner. And then I fucked the nozzle. <laughs> That's like some fucking robot chicken Mario and Luigi and Vice Dude, City shit. Like, yeah. And it was all improv. The moment that Will said that he fucked the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner, he killed the King Boo's family. With. It was like we were people were knocking over the shops towards the end. They, they told us that we could get to keep things like normal for the first yeah. five rounds and then after round five it was like you can start making things weird yeah. and it was like i went over and i like beat the shit out of eric point crow the mario and then he like <laughs> laid dead for, for like full <laughs> for like full two turns i had this thing where i was selling it was like the mushroom where you can move five steps but it was called dash shoes and at some point, I thought it would be funny to just start calling them nicotine shoes and that the shoes had nicotine in them. And then it got to a point where no one was referring to the shoes as dash shoes. Yeah. Everyone was just calling them the nicotine shoes. And it became <laughs> through like... The, through the lore, it was revealed that sales of nicotine had been prohibited. And so the <laughs> shop owner was trying to get everybody hooked on nicotine yeah. by marketing these shoes. And then he There's had flavors such as cotton candy <laughs> and Gerber baby's food mushy peas. And I was like, I feel like you're advertising this to a very young audience. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you talking about, Mario? Everybody likes these flavors. Adults eat baby food sometimes too. Oh my god! Yeah, it was a really, really fun time. But what I will never, ever get over from that trip was the cafeteria that they had there. Yeah. It was so good to the point where when we were getting driven to the airport like two days ago, or yes, two days ago, I was on a monologue about how good the fucking food was we got there and my first food i have they had like a it was it was like a catering like they had like those metal tins that you pull up and it's like yeah. oh you can serve yourself it was buffet style oh my god they had a fucking philly cheesesteak when i first got there and i was like this is a really it was good too it was like this is a really good start and then they had i knew was ted was committed let me put it this way i knew ted was committed when we ran into each other and he said did you have those empanadas and i said yeah 
they were really good. And he said, how many empanadas did you have? And I said, I had three. He said, I had 12. <laughs> wow. I had 12 empanadas. Oh I had 12. Okay, well, you got to understand. They were not like, oh, this size empanadas. They were not that big. They were like this big. Mm. Okay? They were like, I could have them in two bites. They could be eaten in two bites. Two bite bite empanadas. Two bite empanadas. So 24 bites of empanadas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were probably, it was probably like 2,000 calories worth of empanadas, but I. I'm telling you right now, they had a lime aioli that went with it too. Fuck, that lime aioli was was so good, and 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 oh man! And for breakfast they had bacon, and they had these fucking uh, Belgian sugar waffles, like the kind where you can like when you're biting into it, you can taste the grain of sugar. Yeah, mm. oh, it was shockingly delicious. We went out to a restaurant the last night, and everyone was silently disappointed. That we weren't that we going weren't back, back to this, this cafeteria. <laughs> oh my god, it was it was fucked up. They had it was it. I I I I've talked so much about it. Like I feel like I'm a broken record, even though this is the first time I'm talking about it on the podcast. But it really was the most delicious catering I've ever had, and I miss it right now. Mm-hmm. And I'll never get anything like that again. Well, <laughs> that was my Rushmore. Was there bacon there? Will, would there you were. rather have unlimited bacon, but no more video games? Yeah. Or would you rather have games? And you might have heard this question before. Sure. Unlimited games, but no games. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with the bacon, and I know that's a controversial choice, especially because I'm on Twitch. And going yeah. without games, I mean, what am yeah. I doing? But You're just chatting is what you're doing. I'm that's weighing right. and measuring the situation, and I'm going with what I go with. That is the it's most a, confident answer one. we've ever gotten. It is because, well, he's also heard it before. He's heard it and before. Also, I think yeah. it's also because you were being absolutely crystal clear, Schlatt. Crystal clear, cut you're being and dry. Crystal. You were being cut it and dry. It was just, it was just, it was just perfect. Yeah. It was. It was great execution. And Will, great answer. Thank you. And, you know, here's what I'll say. We want to thank you for being here on the Chuckle Sandwich Podcast today, Will. Yeah. Thank you. You are a beautiful man. You have such great stories. You Thank speak you. with such grace. Mm. If I was with you right now, I'd give you a kiss on the cheek. I would accept it. Ted, if you gave me a kiss on the cheek, I'd go. shoot me. Booyan. <laughs> no, you're Booyan. getting further away from it. Booyao. 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 Booyan. I'm probably... I, and, the thing is too, <laughs> and the thing is, too, this is my remembering of how it was said. From yeah. like seven years ago, so it's probably yeah. not even true. Right. Um, we could have been saying some is like, vile, awful shit. shit. <laughs> I love how um, we're, we're creators and we all are of the internet, so we know someone is Googling our pronunciation to make sure that we didn't <laughs> fuck it up. Yeah, exactly. Whenever, dude, whenever, whenever anything from a different language comes out, yeah. it's like, like there's this one, like, you know, if I, if I were to say something like, Jamon tiputano su. Yeah. Okay. It's not even. I'm. 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 I'm botching the pronunciation, but it's supposed to be Greek. Mm. Oh. So Julius Caesar was saying that shit. But I'm saying it weird. I'm saying yeah. it weird because I've yeah. re- said it so many. Th- whatever. Well, thank you so much, Will, for coming on to the <laughs> podcast. We appreciate you being here. Uh, please go check out Will's Twitch stream. He does mm-hmm. lots of various types of content he's really into roguelikes he's i am a big roguelike guy that's not mainly what he plays but no. he does he does he does great commentary on a multitude of things if you heard his voice and you like hearing his voice you should go check him out check him out on twitter and all that and make sure to subscribe to the podcast and follow us on if you're listening on audio and all that and shot you got anything else to say nope great all right bye bye bye